You may have thought you were tuning in to see me today, but that's not true. You have tuned in to see you. You've tuned in to have a moment of reflection about who you are, what you are, what you represent, and to embrace the next great vision and version of yourself. This is a moment of inspiration from the Agape Center, but it's not about me, it's not about the musicians, it's about you and your intention to become more you, for you to deeply listen, not just with your ears, but with your heart and with your entire consciousness so that you can catch perhaps a nuance of truth that will shift your perception, shift your point of view, shift your positionality, shift you out of an opinion zone into coming into a soulful reckoning of your deep and abiding connection with the presence that's never an absence so that your life is not lived in vain whatsoever, but that your life is lived as a representation of the power and the presence and the love of God. You have come into the frequency of this month's theme, which is history in the making, are you a participant or a bystander? It doesn't, it's not hard to see that history is happening right in front of us right now. You can see it through the censorship in the news, or you can see it in the news from time to time that, that history is happening right in front of us. You can begin to see the old paradigm crumbling and, and dissolving and holding on and crumbling and holding on and crumbling, and the new paradigm emerging that is about the possibility of justice, about the possibility of the deconstruction of racism, about the possibility of perhaps a healthcare system that's not a sick care system, about the possibility of embracing the most vulnerable in our society, about the possibility of actually beholding the beloved community in our heart and soul, describing it, articulating it, and then walking in that direction and saying no to injustice, saying no to racism, saying no to classism, saying no to oppression of any kind, not just in America, but all around the world. People are waking up and saying, there's got to be another way. Let's protest, but let's also allow for our protestations with that passion to embrace a grand vision of possibility that contains strategy and implementation. All of this is occurring right in front of our eyes today. And so uh, history is in the making, and we're asking ourselves a question. Are we a bystander watching history, or are we a participant? Now, you have been reminded, and you're being reminded once again, that you did not take a human incarnation at this time in history for such a time as this to, one, go shopping. No. You did not take a human incarnation to get your 15 minutes of fame. No. You did not take a human incarnation to marry a millionaire. No. You did not take a human incarnation to just go into pleasure zones that are full of excitement. No, you've come into a human incarnation to activate your bliss. And your bliss comes from the activation of your potential. And the potential is you becoming more you so that you can be an architect, a builder, a visionary of the beloved community so that your bliss continues to be magnified because of what you are accomplishing that is progressive, that is about the anchoring the realm of ever-expanding good on earth as it is in the mind of God. You are duly reminded now that you leaped into a human incarnation to stay awake in such a way that your energy does leave a vibrational footprint on the planet and that vibrational footprint is peace and love and harmony and wholeness and compassion for all people, not merely your kin, not merely the individuals that share your same skin color, not merely the individuals that share your same religious background, your ethnicity, your nationality, but to grow in such a way that you have a deep love and compassion and caring for all sentient beings on the planet so that you have actually come to planet Earth to perfect your loving. I think it is interesting to note that every single being pretty much 
that has had a near-death experience, I call them near-life experiences, where they have lost uh, temporarily their connection with their body temple. Some people say that they died temporarily. And then when they've come back, they've been resuscitated. They've come back. They all seem to share the same testimony that they were reminded from the other side that they have come to earth to perfect their loving. That they didn't come to earth to collect the baubles and the the toys of the planet. They have come to perfect their loving, to become an instrumentality through which more love can express themselves. And they became amped up to multiply the love everywhere that they go. I think about my friend Daniel Brinkley, who's had a few moments of dying on the planet. And when you meet Daniel Brinkley, he always gives you a big hug, shares a lot of love because he's been on the other side so many times. He knows that he's going to meet the love that he's giving. And so he holds that frequency. And so we at Agape, which means unconditional love, by the way, we're holding the frequency that we are reminding ourselves that we have taken a human incarnation to perfect our loving, to activate bliss through the activation of our potential, to build a kind and just global society as best as we can with the activation of our gifts, talents, and capacities as only we can so that we are aware that we live in a participatory universe. The universe is alive with the presence of God, the presence of God's intelligence, the presence of God's intelligence and love, the heart, mind of the universal presence birthed the multidimensional universe, the entire cosmos, and it is progressive, you see? And it is participatory, which means we're at the stage of our evolution where you have to participate in your own unfolding. You're not just going to sit around and wait till something changes. You are participating in, in the change because the multidimensional living universe corresponds to the nature of your song. Is your song a complaint or is your song visionary? Is your song gossip or is your song a testimony to the good news that God is everywhere? The universe will participate in the nature of your song. So sing a song of inspiration. Sing a song of delight. Sing a song of peace and forgiveness. Sing a song of joy and generosity. Sing a song of compassion. And I don't mean you have to be a singer. It means that you have to come into an alignment with the sweet vibrational frequency of what your soul desires and let it rip even in your sacred silence. So today, we're coming into the vibration of this particular topic, which is grace notes in the darkness, life Wins. I want that just to settle in for a moment here. I want you to catch that. Grace notes in the darkness. Life wins. This is very powerful because no one escapes the human experience without experiencing some level of darkness, some level of loss, some level of back against the wall, some level of coming to your wit's end, some level of I don't know what to do. Everyone has some degree of darkness and the world is going through the interchange of darkness and light, the, the, the wonderful transmutation and alchemical uh, revolution that's occurring as the very lead and leaden experiences of human consciousness is being alchemicalized and transformed into the golden delight of infinite possibility. All of this is occurring in the great birth that is taking place right now. And so we have to ask ourselves, when we're in the darkness, I'm talking about individual or collective as humanity, what good is trying to come out of this darkness? Now, how can we ask that? Because we can ask it because the universe is not only participatory, the universe is progressive, which means it's always expanding to reveal the infinite nature of God. Even when there's a slight contraction, which means cleansing and chemicalization and letting go of that which no longer serves, it's recalibrated, redeemed, and transmuted into a higher frequency, and it expands again. And so the universal presence through the universe, the multidimensional universe, is always expanding to reveal God's infinite nature. So it is progressive. So we must be able to ask what good is trying to happen here in the midst of the dark darkness because something is trying to be born. Something is trying to bring forth a level of progress. Something is trying to, to happen. And we must ask that question because out of that awareness, we hear 
from the scripture, all things work together for good. And then we hear the next level of that. All things work together for good for they who love God. We hear the next level of that. All things work together for good for they who love God and live according to their divine purpose. That's three levels of everything working together for good. Now you speed up the process of redemption and transmutation when you love God. I'm not talking about a man in the sky. I'm talking about a presence that's active everywhere, a presence, the great spirit. Jesus said we must worship God in spirit and in truth. We're talking spirit, not a man. And as we are worshiping and loving the presence and then committing ourselves uh, to embracing uh, our purpose, which is to reflect and to reveal the face of divinity, I'm talking fast because that's just the way it is right now. But your heart is hearing what I'm saying. When we hear all things work together for good, then we know that even in the darkness, something is happening. We leap into the 139th Psalm for a moment, which is a very mystical writing that says that the light and the darkness are both alike to thee, and the dark and the night shines as the day. You can't get that on the surface. That doesn't even make sense. But when you understand it from the deep mystical urgings of the spirit becoming more and more of itself, you know that the darkness is luminous and contains infinite potential that is yet unmanifest. And in the mind of God, the darkness and the light are both shining exactly the same. That, that darkness is the infinite womb of possibility, you see, of which a seed is in the darkness, uh, becoming more of itself and growing uh, uh, the roots and then the shoots out of the darkness. It doesn't, it doesn't show up in the daylight. It shows up out of darkness and births into expression. The light and the darkness are both alike to the presence of God. And so we're able to say in our darkest moment, what good is trying to show up here? That's a question that we must ask ourselves. And it is difficult to ask that question because the surface mind, the fight and flight mind, the nervous mind, the anxious mind, the anxiety mind wants to change a circumstance, wants to change a condition was to change something that is not according to our plans. We rail against it. We curse it. This shouldn't be happening. But in our prayers, we come to an awareness of transcending what should and should not be and come to an awareness of what is. God is all that there is. And the cursing stops and the railing stops. And we ask, oh my God, what good is trying to happen here? Everything works together for good. I didn't say everything is good. I said everything is working together for good. Not everything is good in the larger picture it might be but right now from the limited perception everything ain't good you know people dying ain't good necessarily you see people getting sick ain't good necessarily death and mayhem ain't good and and, and killing ain't good but everything works together for good so we have to ask ourselves that and if we do we'll start to be receptive to some soulful answers that will take us beyond our limited perception of life and take us into the great beyond where we too will be able to say, oh my God, there's a luminous darkness. The dark, the light, and the dark are both alike to the presence of God and the darkness shines as the day. I'm thinking that agape wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the darkness of slander, the darkness of being be rebuffed by a community in Orange County that said that a black person, it wasn't the right thing for a black person to, to run that particular church. Well, out of that darkness came deep levels of forgiveness and the birth of Agape International Spiritual Center. Agape emerged out of a dark moment of, of a small group of people, not a large group of people, just a small group of people saying it's not right for a black man to run this particular church in Orange County. So out of that dark moment it came the birth. I said, come on, Joan Stedman. Come on, Coco Stewart. Come on, Dick Stewart. Come on, Eunice Shelfont. Come on, Nirvana Gale. Come, come on, uh, Naima Powell. Come on, Deborah Johnson. Come on, come on, come on. A small group of people got together in my living room and began to vision the possibility 
of an emerging spiritual community that honored the uniqueness of all peoples, <laughs> embracing the, the ageless wisdom of antiquity, and to anchor a community that was born out of a rebuff, a slander. What good was trying to emerge out of that? Agape was trying to emerge out of that, you see? And so we can look and we can, we can say what good has come out of mm, the coronavirus. Mm, the corona bonus, I call it. Two bonuses come to mind. The first bonus is that people being quarantined had and still have a moment of deep reflection. A moment of no longer being distracted by external busyness, running around at the end of the day, sometimes nothing even accomplished at all, but a, a lot of busyness, moving around and shopping and doing things of that particular nature. And because of the quarantine, many people have had the time to reflect upon themselves and ask themselves, what kind of person do I want to be? What is it that's essential in my life and what's non-essential? What activities are essential? What activities are just activities that I use to bide my time to be anti-bored until I die? You see? And so individuals have, have said to themselves, I, I, I get emails and people on my Instagram saying things like, you know, the, 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 the beauty about the quarantine is I've discovered I've been running away from myself. I've been running away from my deep spiritual practice. I've been running away away from parts of myself that were unhealed that I was afraid to look at, woundedness that I was projecting onto other people all the time and not dealing with it myself. I was vomiting on other people and I should have been turning within and cleaning up my own act so that I can embrace other people. I became aware uh, that, that people may have triggered me, but they didn't install what was in me. That was already there before I met them. I just projected it upon them, you see. So the Corona bonus has provided the context for some deep introspection. Corona bonus. Corona bonus number two. We saw the public execution of George Floyd. And you know what? People couldn't run away from it. They couldn't run away from it because they were quarantined. They had to watch it. They had to watch it 18 times on different social media, the news. And that provided the context for people to hit the streets and say, no more. Not just, not just in Minneapolis, not just on the East Coast, East Coast, West Coast, the United States of America, Australia, New Zealand, Great Britain, uh, Peking. Oh, people all over the world rose up or rising up and say, oh, no. We must deconstruct racism. We must uh, deconstruct injustice. Something has got to change. And you know what the bonus is? The bonus is this. There was no distractions to keep people from doing it. They couldn't go to the movies. They couldn't go to a football game. They couldn't go to a basketball game. They couldn't go to a hockey game. They couldn't go to a ping pong game. They couldn't do nothing but look at a thing and call it a thing. In the past, people have been murdered in the past. Trayvon Martin, people have been murdered in the past. And, 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 and it was a, a momentary pissosity by the community. And then our white brothers and sisters would look at it and say, oh, that's a terrible thing. It shouldn't have happened. But then back to the opera, back to the movies, back to the season tickets, back to this, back to shopping. Bah, you know, and then a month later, we back to business as usual. Somebody gets killed again and everybody's mad. But this time was something different. There were no distractions. No distractions. You had to look at a thing and say, oh, my God. People began to ask questions. How long has this been going on? Oh, wow. Really? That long? Years and years and years? Way back to lynching time, which has started again, by the way. Oh, my God. I didn't know you guys had been living like that all this time. You've been afraid of the police? We love the police. Well, we have a different relationship to the police, you see? And so without that distraction... People began to do deeper introspection. Am I a part of white privilege and don't know about it? Are you been living under the, the ages of racism all this time? Oh, my God, I want to do something about it. I want to change. I want to have a, a soulful, hard conversations. I want to make a difference. I want to study. I want to know what's happening, you see. And so the corona bonus provided deep introspection. Remember, what's the question here? There's grace notes in the darkness. That man being murdered and others being murdered, that's dark. 
It's not make a, you know, it's not just push that under the rug there. That's some dark stuff. That's devious. That's sinister. That's nasty. That's devilish, you see. For somebody to kill somebody like that, you see. However, the sacrifice of that life that is to make sacred provided the context for some good to emerge for the universe that's progressive, that's progressive, to keep inching forward. So people are now understanding that racism is how you treat somebody, and uh, excuse me, how you think about somebody, and justice is how you treat somebody. And they're beginning to see that the scales of justice have not been balanced for a long time, you see, because it was built upon the systemic racism and classism. Poor people, whether you're white or whatever color you are, you don't get the same justice either, you see? And so... The corona bonus is distractions were gone so that the needle could be pushed forward where the deconstruction of racism and the embracing of real justice could at least begin to have a good, we could at least begin to have a conversation about what that vision even looks like. Out of the darkness, light is trying to emerge. There's luminosity in the darkness. And quite recently, The individual that occupies the White House decided to have a rally, his first public rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the day after Juneteenth. Now, what most many people didn't realize was that (laughs) Tulsa, Oklahoma was the site of one of the worst massacres of black people in American history. 36 blocks of black entrepreneurs, uh, newspapers, banks, stores, all manner of things. They used to call it the Black Wall Street because there was so much wealth and so much prosperity that was growing and becoming more and more magnified and beginning to absolutely jump borders into other cities around the United States. And, uh, 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 and in one fateful day, the Ku Klux Klan under the aegis of the law enforcement of that particular time, rode down on this particular city, dropped bombs, hand grenades, killed the occupants of this particular place uh, called uh, Black Wall Street in Greenwood, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Over 300 people were murdered. Other people had to flee for their lives. And not one repair, not one reparation. The government didn't move in not one time and make justice happen. And that was buried, buried in the history books of only a few people knew about it. Why do we say all things work together for good? Because when he decided to have his rally there, suddenly people began to rise up and say, why are you doing this rally here at, at, the, at the almost the 99th anniversary of this massacre? Well, because he did it, more people know about Juneteenth, the day in which the Africans who were enslaved got the news that they were free, and more and more people got the news about this massacre that was kind of hidden from sight. So he opened up history accidentally. The dark decision to have it there opened up the possibility of people seeing what had been going on for a long time, you see? And so so when I say there's luminosity in the darkness, I'm not saying everything is good, but I'm saying everything works together for good. And so we are, are invited to ask the question of ourselves, whatever's going on in our life, you know, what good is trying to emerge? It's difficult to ask that question. But if we can get to it, there's some good trying to happen. I don't know what it is. This is collectively, as a society, or individually, what good is trying to emerge at this time in my life? I know I'm faced with this. This has just happened. This is going on. I don't know what to do about this. It feels so dark. I feel so separated from the presence of God. If we could just, in our midnight hour, go in. What good is trying to happen out of this? Bigger the problem, the bigger the blessing. 
What good is trying to happen if this more intense the problem, more intense the blessing? What good is trying to happen here? Everything works together for good for they who love God and for they who live according to the divine purpose. Everything works together for good. You up the ante by loving the presence of God. Not a man in the sky, but a presence. You begin to fall in love with this presence and then surrender to your purpose, which is to reflect and reveal the presence of God. And then there's a quickening, a transmutation, alchemy takes place. A great redemption happens, meaning the thought forms of separation, the thought forms of indignity, the thought forms of a lack of self-worth, the thought forms of lack and limitation, all of those thought forms that have been encased around uh, people become redeemed. That is, there's a great transmutation that takes place and the lead becomes gold through observation, intentionality, and asking the right question. Right now, we're moving through history. You see, history is happening. And we don't want to merely rail against that which we don't want. We want to call a thing a thing, but begin to ask what good is trying to happen. And then to the best of our ability through our intuitive faculty, through our heart connection with the divine, begin to catch what's trying to happen. Universe is progressive. There's a vision of possibility trying to happen. And then articulate it. So that the protestations that are passionate, we embrace that passion. Oh, yeah, push the needle forward. Individuals are being arrested for injustice. Reform is beginning to take place. People are beginning to listen like they've never listened before because there's no distractions out there. And that passion must be met with vision. So you're not just going against something. You're going for something. This is the vision. And that vision must be met with strategy. And that strategy then will be met with implementation all in the consciousness of a divine love of a presence, the love of each other, the love of, of everyone, not a palliative, sweet, sentimental love, but the love of God. Remember what I said at the beginning of this talk, that we are here to perfect our loving, particularly when it's hard, you see. When it's hard, remember what Dr. King said, that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Everything works together for good, but you have to participate in it. And please remember this. And you have to remember this during these particular times. You are a sovereign spiritual being. You are the luminous being shot straight uh, from the intelligence and the love and the beauty of God. You are not owned by the state or any external agency. And sometimes you get hypnotized into thinking that governments and pr principalities and potentates can control you. They cannot. You are a sovereign being. Do not give up your power to an external agency. Rise together as a citizenry and proclaim the good news that this is the time for the embracing of a kind and just global society beginning with the disarming of our own minds. Everything isn't good, but everything works together for good. And so as a sovereign being, you're not to come under the frequency of eugenics, individuals who are trying to depopulate the society because their vision is so small, they don't understand that with new energy forms and with um, understanding of how to harvest wonderful food to eat, you don't need to eliminate people from the earth. There's a whole dynamic that comes only when you're tapped in spiritually that you can begin to see there's enough for everyone on the planet, you see. It's a but, but you got to be tapped in. If you're not tapped in, you'll, you'll be into depopulation. You'll be into vaccinating everybody and killing them off. You are a dynamic, luminous being. Start, shot straight from the presence of God. Your immune system can handle anything if you take care of yourself. Cut off the sh all that sugar. Walk around the block. Get your body going on. Eat some vegetables. Eat some fruit. Drink some water. Get some good green drinks in your body. Take care of yourself. This is the temple of the living God. Some of you take better care of your car than you do your own body. 
And then you wonder why you catch a common cold regularly. Mind and body come into alignment with your spiritual celestial body. Now, I'm not chastising you. I'm just bringing an energy so that you, you wake up. What? Oh, I've been sleepwalking. I've been thinking that the government controls my life. You control your life. You put people in office. You direct. You participate in the world you want to build. Don't just be a bystander and say, well, I'm not going to vote. Nobody's good. But you cut the nonsense. Wake up. Now, here's the deal. Let me repeat myself. Sometimes you got to repeat in order to go in. History in the making. Participant or bystander. Your choice. We live in a participatory universe, so you're participating even if you're not participating. Your lack of choice makes you live by default rather than by choice. You're living by chance instead of choice. So you have to participate. What kind of world do you want to live in? Why don't you describe it? And begin to become that vitalizing energy, you see? And then the darkness, there's grace there. Why, how can we say that? Because God is everywhere. God is in your darkest moment. God is in that moment where you feel so separated, when you don't know what to do. The presence of God is right there as potential. How do you get to the potential? You ask. What good is here that I presently can't see? What's trying to be born out of this? What good is trying to happen? The universe is progressive. And then you'll be able to say with the psalmist, the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. And the darkness shines as the day. The potential is shining as bright as the manifest luminosity. The darkness is glowing. Now I can say this from direct encounter. The light is everywhere, even in the shadows. The brighter the light, the bigger the shadow. Oh, why don't you meditate on that? The brighter the light, the longer the shadow. You see all kinds of stuff you couldn't see before. It becomes the possibility for greater emergence. Oh my God, there's so much here. There's so much here. However, I'm not going to keep you here all day. Because I think I've downloaded enough for you to contemplate the presence and the power of the love of God. You see, the good. Without a rebuff, the Gopi sinner wouldn't have the impetus to birth itself. You see, without the coronavirus, the deep reflection that many people are going through about what's essential and not essential in their life may not happen. It can still happen for many people who are, who are bored with doing whatever they're doing and all the stuff they're eating. You see, without the coronavirus, there'd be so many distractions that people wouldn't have even noticed another unarmed person being killed. And the occupant of the White House provided the context for people to understand the meaning of Juneteenth and the worst massacre that's ever happened as a part of American history. So people have a deeper understanding of some of the hurt and the woundedness that's there in Tulsa by some of the ancestors who never got any repair based on all that land that was destroyed and burnt to the ground simply because they were black. God is everywhere. So we're in a great redemptive moment here to perfect our loving and to come into such a state of joy. Now you may say to yourself, what's he talking about joy when he's just talking about all this stuff happening in the world? Because as I mentioned yesterday on a Zoom call that I was on with uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson and uh, Bishop William Barber and Bishop Yvette Flunder and so many others, I said, as the teachings of Jesus the Christ indicated, there'll be trials and tribulations in the world, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Now, that's a practice, meaning 
there's going to be all kinds of stuff going down. That's just the way it is. In the world of phenomena, things are always going down. But be of good cheer. Now, when Jesus said that, it wasn't a throwaway statement. It wasn't a palliative, happy statement. Oh, be of good cheer. No, no, no. It was become so entrenched with your intrinsic nature that joy and happiness does not come from conditions. It comes from your real nature. Be able to hold that frequency, become strong enough to hold the frequency of joy, not based on an external condition. Most people have joy and happiness based on an external condition. If things go well, I'm happy. If things don't go well, I'm sad. No, that's being run by the world. That's being a puppet of circumstance. You don't want to live that way. You'll go up and down, up and down, because things are always changing the external world. Somebody's going to die. Somebody's going to get fired. Somebody's going to do, something's going to happen. You can always be up and down. Oh, I'm sad. I'm happy. Oh, I'm sad. I'm happy. Oh, I'm sad. I'm happy. No, that's not for children of God. That's not for the sons and daughters of the Most High to live that way. You are to develop the capacity to hold joy, and the joy not based on a circumstance, but based on your connection with God. Be of good cheer. Overcome the transitory world, and then you can walk in the world, but be of a higher state of consciousness. Perfect your loving and bring to the world a frequency, a vibration of such love and peace and compassion and generosity and creativity and innovativeness and resourcefulness that does not come from the world but comes from your connection with the presence of God. That's what he meant. There'll be trials and tribulations in the world. But be of good cheer. Practice your prayer, your meditation, Come into a great oneness with the presence. I have overcome that world. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. That's, you know what that's called? It's called freedom. Spiritual liberation is what it's called. To be free. Not denying that stuff is going down. You call a thing a thing. But you don't let it tear you down. And you become a vehicle for transformation. Sometimes even in your sacred silence at the altar in your own home. A vehicle for transformation. Rising and shining. Like many of our practitioners who are online watching the service right now. Holding that prayer. That everyone catches not just what I'm saying over the tongue. But catching what I'm saying under the tongue. That which can't be enunciated or articulated in words, but must be caught in consciousness. Because let me tell you one thing. I'm going to stop. I really am. I promise. Don't leave. I'm going to stop. Let me say one thing. This stuff that I'm teaching, this new thought, ageless wisdom, this transformational knowledge, it really can't be taught. It can only be caught in consciousness. When the student is ready and receptive, it's caught. I've heard that a million times. This is the first time I heard it. He said that 20 million times. I heard it today. It has to be caught by a receptive mind. That's a childlike mind. That's a beginner's mind. That's listening to it for the very first time. Okay, I am going to stop. Now, one of the ways that we stay in that vibration of cheer is we begin to allow the body temple to move. But first, before you do that, I want you... Oh, first let's do this. First, let us see one of the families that sit in uh, their uh, video from Dancing with the Rev. Oh, so this is the Clayton family. I feel so safe. I oh, they changed so it. Safe. Okay. This is Sheena Robinson. That was 20 seconds, I guess, huh? Maybe you can play it again. <laughs> I turned my head and it was over. Protected. Here we go. I am so angry. I am so protected. I am so protected. I feel so safe. I feel so safe. I feel brilliant around me. I feel brilliant around me. That's Sheena. Give her some love right there in your living room. Bring some life to your living room by giving her. You see, so we begin to move the body temple a little bit. And, and the first thing I want you to do, I want you to just put your arms around yourself and, and, but, and I want you to feel right now the presence of, of love right where you are, the presence of God's love. 
And I want you to think about someone you deeply love and someone or perhaps that deeply loves you. It doesn't matter. This is Father's Day, and so I'm embracing my dad, Francis Beckwith Jr., who made his transition last year. And I'm embracing all the ways that he shared love and all the ways that I love him on this day. Now, the thing about love is that you begin to produce oxytocin when you're in love. Oxytocin is the love chemical that frees you from fight and flight. It frees you from fear. Just when you hear the scripture, perfect love cast out all fear. We're entering to that love ethic right now. Just feel the love that you have for someone that someone has for you. It doesn't matter whether they have a body or don't have a body. Someone's on this side of the veil or the other. Feel that love. Allow for that love that you feel for them now to be for what God created as you. So that you're falling in love with yourself, not from a narcissistic way, not from an egocentristic way, but just God made something so precious as you. Feel that love. This is ecstatic love bliss. Feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Now, we are segue from this dynamic feeling of love to the moving of the body temple. They're going to start off with let's groove. And then the band's going to pick it up and take it over. Think about all the good happening in your life. Sometimes we focus on the stuff we don't like. And sometimes the stuff we don't like is not as big as the stuff that's going right in our life. Our heart is beating. We have another day of life. Our needs are met. Think about all the good that's in your life right now. All the love, all the support, all the joy, all the family, everything. It's all right. All right. Let this Don't make me make a fool out of myself by myself. Join with me. Let this school. Send me those clips. kind of tight. All right. If you can't dance, just do this right in here. You know, the movie hits, just kind of hang right in here. Just start here. If you're in your living room with your friends, you can't, just, just stay right here. But if you want to go a little more, maybe you want to do this. Don't try this though, unless, unless you're a little limber, okay? on the stage. I don't care. I care about God and love, beauty, joy, generosity, creativity. Okay, we start to segue. You know what? You know why you do your yoga? For health and to prepare yourself for meditation. You know why you do your Tai Chi and your Qigong? To prepare yourself for meditation and prayer. You know why you do your Katas and Karate? To prepare yourself for prayer and meditation. You know why you run around that track? You walk around the block? To prepare yourself for prayer and meditation. You exercise. Get your heart flowing, but then you, it becomes easier to stop. You're not as fidgety, you're not as anxious. You, you, can, you can now stop. So right there in your living room, bring more life by just sitting down in your living room and join with me in this prayerful moment. Everything is conspiring for us to come into prayer together as a global community, the agape global nation. We're coming into prayer together. 
We stop. Don't, don't leave yet. Don't leave the room. This is an important moment. We stop. We allow for the two eyes to close and the one eye to open. This one eye that they used to call the third eye, we call the first eye because you're a spiritual being first. So this is the first eye. And then you have the two eyes, which came secondly as you had a human incarnation. We close the outer eyes. We open the inner eye. We just have an intention for that to occur. And we just move into a great degree of thanksgiving. Oh, I'm so thankful. A great degree of appreciation. Oh, I'm so appreciative. A great degree of, of, of wonderful gratitude. I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Oh, we come into a deep sense of gratitude and thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation. We open our heart space and we just say, thank you, life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, Infinite Presence, Lord, God, Almighty, Lord, God, all beauty, Lord, God, all intelligence, Lord, God, all harmony, Lord, God, all power, Lord, God, called by many names, but we call it forth. Now is the activity of our awareness. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. And in this consciousness of gratitude, be of good cheer, be of great gratitude, be of great thanksgiving as we transcend and overcome the world of phenomena. And we begin to recognize the great presence. Oh, it is everywhere. It must be because it's omnipresent. But it is everywhere in its fullness. Therefore, it's not a little God over there and a lot of God over there. No. It's everywhere in its fullness because God is not just in its creation. All of creation is in God. So it's never absorbed by its creation. There's always more of God to reveal more and more and more and more and more and more creation, more and more creativity. Oh my God, there are things that... <laughs> You can't even imagine that are being born right now through the mind of God. You talk about parallel multidimensional universes in a cosmic, a cosmos that's always unfolding. There's so much living biology. There's so much. But we give thanks that we can begin to recognize it now and feel our intrinsic oneness with it. Say to yourself, I'm one with God. That's not blasphemy. To say you're one with God? Do you realize that a wave is one with the ocean, but it's still a wave? It cannot exist without the ocean? You're one with God. You can't exist without God. Your life is the life of God. So in this consciousness of oneness, I have the opportunity to speak the word for each and every one of us, knowing that there's only really one of us here, one power, one presence, one life, one intelligence, one beauty. Oh, divine spirit being connected with this divine presence, I speak the word for each and every one of us, knowing that we're free today, that this has been a moment of awakening that continues to unfold throughout the course of our day, our week, our month, and for the rest of our lives. That something has been activated within us that allows us to be on an arc of unfolding evolutionary tendencies. Growth-centric beings without any sense of stagnation whatsoever in any area of our life. Oh, Mother, Father, God, we, we surrender to the greatness that's within us. The next stage of our own unfolding. I call forth divine health, well-being, wellness, for everyone that is listening and feeling right here and right now, it doesn't matter whether you're watching the archive a few days later or whether you're right here live with me now, this energy is the same. I call forth divine wholeness. I call forth prosperity and infinite supply. I call forth 
transformational knowledge, divine wisdom, creative intelligence flowing through us in a language and in a way that we can understand and act upon. I call it forth right now. Something wonderful is happening. This is what we proclaim. Something wonderful is happening. I proclaim that. Something wonderful is happening. I declare it. I affirm it. I know it. And now we, we surrender to it. Take this opportunity as I go get to the prayer list. We invite uh, Jamie Lula to give us a moment of sweet opening through song. Of love giving freely, refusing none. Oh, great spirit of love, eternal goodness flows like a flood. Love is all, is love. Join us in singing the music of one in No greater blessing under the sun. Oh, great spirit of love, giving freely, refusing none. Oh, great spirit of love. Eternal goodness flows like a flood. Love is all, is love. Join us in singing the music of one in all, all in one. No greater blessing. Under the sun. I like that. No greater blessings under the sun. No greater blessing. No. 